This is The Royal Report. Good evening, welcome to The Royal Report. I'm Caroline DeRusso and we have a packed show for you tonight. King Charles's nephew Peter Phillips joins the show to discuss how the royal family is handling their recent challenges and how eager King Charles is to get back to work. Princess Catherine's cancer diagnosis shocked the globe. We'll give you the latest on that story. And Russell Myers joins us live from London to discuss his exclusive story about an alleged Princess Catherine security breach. But first, I sat down with the late Queen's grandson, Peter Phillips, for an exclusive interview during his trip to Australia. We have that interview for you later in the show, but his insights into the royal family as a family unit were especially enlightening. This is what he had to say about the King. He's in good spirits. I think uh, ultimately he's hugely frustrated. Um, he's, a, he's frustrated that he can't, can't get on and do everything that he wants to, wants to be able to do. And even more importantly, given the recent allegations and muckraking on social media, the relationship between Catherine and William. Ho and William make a fantastic team together. Um, the kids are, their kids are great and, and they, have a, they have the balance of, of public life and trying to be parents to, to three young children. Like most of you, no doubt, I woke up yesterday to bombshell news that Princess Catherine had released a video confirming she'd been diagnosed with cancer and she was receiving preventative chemotherapy. Here is what she had to say. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. After weeks of speculation about the princess's health and some of the most undignified prattle I have ever seen, it was also reported this week that staff at the medical facility where Princess Catherine received her treatment allegedly tried to access her personal medical records. Royal Report regular Russell Myers had the exclusive on, his, on this story and he joins me next. But the point is this. Every boundary has been breached and every standard of decency has gone out the window. The whole situation, from beginning to end, has been riddled by the most dismal behaviour, by purveyors of malicious gossip and, frankly, it's absolutely shameful. Joining me now to discuss is Royal Editor for the Daily Mirror, Russell Myers. Russell, we know Princess Catherine has been diagnosed with cancer and is receiving preventative chemotherapy. What does this mean and what does her treatment and recovery look like? Well, good evening, Carol. Well, I still think we're all reeling from the news uh, delivered by the Princess of Wales personally that she's undergoing preventative chemotherapy. And uh, it's interesting the language that was used by both the Princess and Kensington Palace after we've spoken to them afterwards. And uh, it seems, you know, a, quite a grave situation for the whole family to have dealt with. You know, such an unenviable task to go through alone. Certainly, William and Kate deciding how to break the news to their three young children was absolutely heartbreaking when uh, Princess was talking about it. And I think, you know, moving forward, she's going to be taking a leave of absence for the foreseeable future to rest and recuperate fully. That is exactly her main aim at the moment. And, you know, she said uh, that she has great doctors, great medical team around her. And we can only hope that um, you know, her condition is, uh, is um, you know, brought to, brought to a close as soon as possible. Now, this week you broke a story about an alleged security breach at the hospital uh, the Princess of Wales was being treated at. It, that has reverberated in a very big way. What is alleged to have happened and why is it such a big deal? Well, it's a huge, huge issue. This major security breach at the London clinic that I revealed uh, during the week uh, you know, has huge ramifications, not only for the hospital at the centre of the allegations, but also for the palace and the royal family. The, the hospital has treated members of the royal family, prime ministers, presidents for decades and has a previously unblemished record. But uh, the story centres along uh, three members of staff at the London Clinic alleged to have 
tried to access the private medical records of the Princess of Wales. The alleged breach happened after she was discharged um, following two weeks at the London Clinic in January. And I think that the, the Information Commissioner's Office here in the United Kingdom will be investigating that as a criminal investigation. So huge, huge implications, not only for the individuals involved, but also for the hospital and uh, and just another weight for the Princess of Wales and the rest of the royal family to deal with, uh, which have been very, very testing times indeed. Now, look, we know it's a big deal, but this story is instructive, isn't it? Because after weeks of various commentators demanding that Princess Catherine share her private medical information with the public, do you think now there's been a realisation that she does have and does deserve a level of privacy? Well, undoubtedly. I mean, I think uh, it's been an absolutely extraordinary time. In all my years of covering the Royals, I've never known a period like this. And I think Kensington Palace said it themselves a few weeks ago, hitting out at the madness of social media. And what we've seen is this cascade of conspiracy theories peddled by people who have absolutely no information or insight whatsoever. And uh, let's not forget, there are people making a lot of money peddling these conspiracy theories. I mean, racking up millions of views on social media, it's become outlandish. It's been hurtful. We've seen celebrities uh, getting involved in the act. I mean, Blake Lively had to issue uh, an apology, very much eating humble pie this week um, after she was, you know, caught out mocking the Princess of Wales over her Photoshop fail, if you will. And I think that people have, have taken a leave of their senses and we really need to take a look at ourselves as a society. If these, uh, we are buying into these conspiracy theories, we are taking them on, we're discussing them with our friends at the, the school gates or in the pub, it definitely has become quite unsavoury. And I think the Princess of Wales said it her best, herself best when she asked for privacy, she asked for time to rest and recuperate and, uh, and get back to her best as soon as possible. And it's obviously a very sobering set of circumstances for the royal family to have two of its most senior members diagnosed with cancer within weeks of each other. But we do understand that King Charles has been very supportive of Catherine during this time. Well, absolutely. I mean, what an unprecedented set of circumstances. We had, uh, first of all, Princess of Wales in hospital, then the King for his enlarged prostate operation, then, of course, his uh, diagnosis with cancer, and then just days later, it appears that the Princess of Wales was dealing with her own diagnosis. But certainly, you know, they are a close family. And as someone said to me at the palace this week, through their darkest times, they will pull together. And I think that that has been shown in spades over the last few days. Certainly, we understand that the King had been visiting the Princess of Wales when she was in hospital. You can imagine him sort of uh, toodling down the corridor just to see her for, for a brief chat. And then, you know, after they've come out of hospital, they've shared a lunch together just before her major announcement. So the King and the rest of the family hugely supportive of the Princess of Wales moving forward. And I think, you know, there, it will fall to the rest of the family to, to step up in this time, to put an arm around those people that are suffering in this way. And uh, it's certainly been quite an extraordinary period over the last few weeks. Absolutely. Russell Myers, thank you for your insights as usual. Now, joining me now is News Corp columnist Louise Roberts and royal commentator Angela Mollard. Now, Angela, with the benefit of hindsight, a slimmed-down royal family doesn't seem like such a good idea. It doesn't, does it? I mean, if you think about it, in the last four years, they have lost the equivalent of half a soccer team. I mean, six members of the royal family, uh, Meghan and Harry, have gone um, to America. Then, of course, we had Prince Andrew had to step back from royal duties. We then saw the death of uh, the Queen. And now, of course, uh, Charles and Kate are both out of operation. Look, I do think, yes, it, it is a slim down monarchy and they will be overstretched. William particularly will be overstretched. But I don't see it really as a crisis. I think it's something that needs to be managed. Their charities, um, their public duties will, will obviously need to uh, be managed. But they're not performing monkeys. They are human. And I don't think they've ever looked more human and less institutional than they do right now. And I think the other key point is that we might just have to lower our expectations of them. We now live in a 24-7 mm. news cycle. It might now actually be time for us to step back as members of the public and say, no, we don't need to see them every day. The Queen, when she was pregnant, um, the late Queen, with um, with uh, the last two of her children, Andrew and Edward, she took months off work. So it's not unprecedented for members of the royal family to take some time off.
Absolutely. And look, I caught up with Peter Phillips earlier this week. This is what he had to say about the current internal support network within the royal family. There's a lot of pressure on the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh at the moment, my mother, um, to be able to take on a lot more of, and, and the Queen, obviously, to take on a lot more of the responsibilities and lots more of the engagement um, perspective. And we'll bring you that interview shortly. But, Louise, off the back of what Angela said, doesn't this also mean extra responsibility for William and potentially for longer? It does, Caro, because as the heir to the throne, the burden falls directly on his shoulders. I mean, Camilla is has also been stepping up, of course, but she's 76 years of age. She also has a spouse who is battling cancer, so there has to be mitigation for her as well. And I think to Russell's point about the rest of the family pulling together and perhaps looking at the calendar of events, what is the most critical for the royals to be seen at and what involves the most travel, what's the most arduous task, and making sure that these issues shared equally amongst people who perhaps aren't at home looking after someone who's battling cancer. I really think it's time for everyone to pull together. And we know that's what the royal family does very, very well. It's a shame in a way, of course, that Harry's not there. I mean, I, I would argue that now is a good time for him to sort of fly in under the radar and do some work quietly in the background to support his father, support his brother and his sister-in-law. But whether that happens will, will remain to be seen, I think. Absolutely. And Angela, uh, on the question of Princess Catherine's privacy, obviously just discuss it with Russell. It has mm. been a huge issue. You wrote about it for the Daily Telegraph this week. Mm, that's right. I was reminded of a time back in um, 1993 when uh, the Princess of Wales, the former Princess of Wales, Diana, um, was caught out in a gym. There was a, a gym owner had put a camera in, in the gym and taken pictures of her. Massive, massive breach of her privacy. She won a legal case to have those pictures withdrawn so that they could never be used again. And the, the fee that was going to the gym owner was donated to charity. And it felt this week, as Russell was saying, when those uh, the, the allegations of staff looking at uh, the Princess of Wales medical records, it felt like we were back there again. This very febrile environment where people want want information and they feel that there is no boundaries. I think part of the reason is because we are now living in a culture of oversharing. Social media encourages people to overshare. But that doesn't mean that everyone wants to participate in that. Absolutely. And that, that is totally true. And if people want to share, they're entitled to. But honestly, some of the carry on in various parts of the media and celebrity land in the lead up to Catherine's announcement has just been beyond contempt. Louise, I've only got about 30 seconds, but I understand the grovelling apologies have commenced. They sure have. And look, it beggars belief that these celebrities would join the pile on for Kate. You know, where's Kate? Kim Kardashian making jokes about her car going out to find Kate. Of course, Blake Lively doing a very awkward sort of clumsy Photoshop fail, you know, mocking Kate without actually naming her. But we all knew what the um, the point of that Instagram post was. She has, of course, since apologised and, and said, you know, best wishes to all again without naming Kate. But I find it staggering the, that these celebrities would even engage in this sort of insult and this sort of terrible behaviour towards a woman who is um, was already unwell. We knew she was unwell, but not as seriously as we have since discovered. So it's um, and uh, you know whether they're actually sorry or whether they're trying to you know mitigate reputational damage. Of course, is a different thing. Absolutely, Louise Roberts, An Angela Mollard. Thank you as always for joining us. Now, coming up, King Charles's nephew, Peter Phillips, joins the show to discuss how the royal family is handling their recent challenges and how eager Charles is to get back to work. You don't want to miss this exclusive interview up next. Welcome back to the show. And as I said at the top, I sat down with the late Queen's grandson, Peter Phillips, for an exclusive interview during his trip to Australia. Now, the full interview is available on our Sky News website and social media platforms. But here is part of it for you tonight. Peter Phillips, welcome to the Royal Report. Fabulous to have you with us. What brings you to Australia? Well, it's very nice to be here for my sort of annual trip to Australia. But on this particular trip, I'm here for um, representing IFAC, which is the International Foundation for Arts and Culture. Um, founded by uh, Dr Handa um, and he supports the Handa Opera on the Harbour which is in its 11th year and very much looking forward to, um, to being there and seeing, uh, seeing the show on, on the Harbour with a spectacular backdrop. Now look I'd love to move on to the family and to your mother Princess Anne who is such an integral part 
of the royal family. How does she inspire you? Because she inspires so many others. So both both our parents have been um, obviously been hugely influential to, to Zara and myself. Um, and I think primarily it's through their work ethic. Um, both of them are, are incredibly hardworking, and um, and still both in their seventies, they're still working probably a lot harder than um, than either of them probably expected. Princess Anne does do so much work for charity, including overseas and, and even here in Australia. We know that she's very close to the King. She was his gold stick in waiting during the coronation, which was just absolutely sensational to watch. Do you think she gets uh, the recognition that she deserves? I think so now, yes. Uh, I think um, in, in the past um, she has always been uh, she's not always been sort of the media's favourite, so to speak. So, but she's she's never really let that bother her. She's always just kept her head down and she's kept supporting the organisations that she wants to support. That's very admirable. Now, moving on to the King, we know he's had a challenging couple of months. Is he in good spirits? He still seems in in recent weeks to getting back amongst it to the extent that he can. Uh, listen, he's he's in he's in good spirits. I think uh, ultimately he's hugely frustrated. Um, he's, a, he's frustrated that he can't, can't get on and do everything that he wants to, wants to be able to do. Um, but he is, he's, he's very pragmatic. He, he understands that there's a, there's a period of time that he really needs to um, focus on himself. But at the, at the same time, he is, he is always pushing um, his staff and, and everybody and his doctors and nurses to be able to say, actually, can I, you know, can I do this, can I do that? So he's, he, I think um, the overriding... Um, message would be that he's, he's obviously very keen to get back to, to a, a form of normality um, and is, is probably frustrated that um, recovery is, 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 is you know, taking a little longer than probably he, he would want it to. Now look, there is a royal visit planned to Australia later in the year and this will be his first official visit to Australia. What do you think that he and the Queen would like to achieve, I suppose, uh, in that first visit? Oh, that's a that's a good question. I think I think they would they would obviously love to see as many people as possible. Um, you know, they are um, they they are very keen and very active to be able to you know be seen and, and and meet as many people as possible from all walks of life. The king has had a few challenges recently, in particular uh, in relation to his health. Um, but how does uh, the Prince of Wales and other family members like yourself? How I suppose does the family muck in to support? Uh, well, it, everyone has their own different role to play. I think is the is the short answer to that. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of pressure on. The Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh at the moment, my mother, um, to be able to take on a lot more of, and, and the Queen, obviously, to take on a lot more of the responsibilities and lots more of the engagement um, perspective. Um, and I think the um, yeah, that that adds its that adds its own pressures. There are there are there are other members of the family who who are able to support everyone else um, behind the scenes, and that is, um, you know, in many ways that's, that's equally as important. But there, there is definitely a, um, uh, you know, th there's a short-term pressure on, on certain members of the family to be able to um, continue to be out and about and to be seen and to support, um, and not only just to support organisations, but also conduct the official engagements that need to be, uh, need to be done. I'd just like to touch briefly on the late Queen and um, obviously your grandmother. As the eldest grandson, and how, how are you adjusting to life without her? She was such, such a, a, huge, a huge figure. Yeah, I mean, she was, um, she was remarkable in, in so many ways. Um, she was obviously a... Um, she was a... a, a a figurehead that had been part of everybody's lives for as long as as long as people could remember, um, and for us, she was, um, you know, as having her as a, as a as a grandmother and a role model was um, was unique. And I was I was lucky to um, I was lucky to be in in Scotland um, before she uh, before she passed. Um, and actually having those few days with her um, just just in in Scotland just as, as a family as a quiet um, um, before she before she left Balmoral that was that was really nice that was um, 
yeah, looking back on it, it's still quite emotional, that, that part, because it was a proper family, the family moment. Mm -hmm. both, both her and, and um, the Duke of Edinburgh still have left a huge imprint on all of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I just want to briefly touch on the Princess of Wales about her health, that there is a very private and family matter, but on the wider um, matter of uh, public support, that must be very heartening for the family more broadly. No, 100%. And I think for, for her and for the, uh, and for the King, the, the outpouring of, of, of support for both of them and well wishes for the, both of them to, to recover um, quickly has been... Um, has been hugely heartening. Um, she is a um, she's remarkable in herself. She's um, you know without without any question she is um, you know her and William make a fantastic team together. Um, the kids are, their kids are great and and they have a they have the balance of of public life and trying to be parents to to three young children, which is is always difficult um, and. I think they have, they have, they've, they've got it pretty right because, you know, I think as um, history has taught us and anyone knows that, you know, actually you want to be there for your children when they are, um, where of a certain age you want to be able to go and drop them off at school and pick them up from school and go and watch matches and be part of their, their school lives. And, you know, and I think that balance of, doing the family life and and also the public life you know i think they they they're, they're, they've pretty much got that that bang on and i suppose when you are in the public eye all the time that that is a challenge in itself those family moments and those quiet times and and even when the 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 broader family gets together uh, that must be such an incredibly important part. It is um, completely, and and we're we're very lucky that um, you know, whilst we probably don't see as much of each other as we we would like to, as you say, when we are together, it is it's a very um, it's it's a very important time, and it's not just you know, it's not just for us as cousins, but it's also for all of our children to be together. It was you know when my grandparents were alive, it's about them being able to spend time with their great grandchildren um, and so you know these these times are important and you know as certainly you know when you look at it from my grandparents perspective the older they got the more time you made for to be able to go and see them and allow your their great grandchildren to spend time with them because you know it's a pretty unique uh, pretty unique situation that that any child can spend time with their great Great grandparents, so you know, family time together is 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 so important, um, and it just str strengthens that strengthens that bond of of support that everybody needs, and um, and certainly in, in in tough times is really important. Well, look, we wish uh, the Princess of Wales and, and the King to a speedy recovery, and we hope very much that you enjoy the rest of your trip to Australia and that you're back soon. And Peter, thank you so much for your time with us today. Thank you. If you'd like to watch more of that interview, like I said earlier, it's available on our Sky News website and social media platforms. And that's the show for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Up next is Newsnight. Good night and we'll see you next week.